Uh, very talented. Um, they're a tall, long um, group. Um, defensive front um, creates a lot of havoc. Um, obviously, they're in the backfield a lot. They're penetrating <coughs> defense. You know, we've coached against John before, and um, that's how his, his defense is. You know, that's his philosophy and his, um, you know, what he teaches, that defensive front, get up the field, create havoc. Um, uh, at the, you know, in the SEC. Yeah, we had some battles with them. How do they prefer to create that habit? Um, just great get off. Um, they do a good job of studying the quarterback's cadence. Um, so they're able to jump the cadence and get in the backfield. Um, you can tell they really preach, which most defensive line or defensive line coaches do, the get off and you know how to get in the backfield and um, you know create some havoc, like I said, and they do a really good job of it. Yeah, just great pass rushers. Um, you know, they, they're they're looking to make plays. Most, you know, a lot of defensive linemen want to you know hold the blocks and let the linebackers go make the plays. There's some teams teach like that, where this this crew believes that their defensive front can get in the backfield and make plays. That's why they've had so many, um, you know, TFL tackles for loss this season. Yeah, our kids, um, they did a really good job this weekend. A lot of energy and enthusiasm. Um, I think with them having time off, they got to a point where they really miss being out on the field together. And that's why they had the enthusiasm. Um, this week will be important for us because, you know, we, we'll get a lot better this week. Um, it's the benefit of being in a bowl game. Um, our young kids, our kids that redshirted, will get a lot of reps this week. Um, and we'll be able to go back and reteach our schemes like almost like we're in training camp mode, um, you know, for this first week um, before we actually go all in game planning. So it, it'll be a good week for us. How are you approaching your quarterback situation? Meaning? Lamar is a starter. Yeah. And how are you dealing with, how will you deal for the next couple of weeks in terms of reps for all the guys? Yeah. Who will be the backup, that kind of thing? Yeah, they, you know, they've all done a good job. I mean, we get so many reps at practice, you know, in a, in a 15-minute skeleton period or seven-on-seven seven period, we could get somewhere around 40 or 42 snaps. And the reason we do it like that, so everybody gets plenty reps. Um, you know, so they're all going to get reps. Um, they all got reps this weekend um, in our practice sessions. They're doing a good job. We actually kept our, some of our young guys out after practice um, yesterday. We have what we have, you know, newcomers practice. And we kept Reggie out there just so he can get extra work in his quarterback reps because, you know, the other um, practice session, he's doing other things. So we just try to find ways to get everybody working um, and make sure that everybody is developing in these extra practices we get. Talk about Lamar now versus the way we were back in August and some of the differences in him in December that maybe he didn't see back then. Uh, I mean, well, he's been out there now. He knows a lot more about our offense. Um, you know, he understands what college football is all about now. Um, but, you know, he's one of the um, main guys that's going to benefit from these practices because we have went back these last couple of days and, you know, installed the offense like he didn't know anything about the offense. And then the second time around, he starts to pick up different things. And, he, you know, he, he understands what it is. But when you start back over from the beginning and start teaching again, it's really helped them and helped all of them out, you know. Even Reggie and Kyle are sitting in there, and I'm going through something that seems like it's elementary, and then they're taking notes, and I'm going, you guys should already know that. But it's always good to go back and reteach everything from the beginning again. Is he getting closer to getting the right mesh points in the run game, Lamar? He is. Yeah, he, he's, you know, we, we, he's a lot better um, under center than some guys that we've had before that's done really well. So he's not, um, you know, he's, he's comfortable under the center, and he's going to get these three weeks of work you know, at it. So I don't think you'll have a problem at all. Are you healthy? Yeah, I think so. Um, Jamari's been out there with us, um, running and catching, and, you know, he feels good about where he is. And we're still a few weeks away from the game, so I expect him to be, um, you know, full speed and ready to go. Brandon was on the field with us this weekend, ran well. Our athletic trainers did a, obviously did a great job with him, um, getting him back on the field. 
So we, we feel good about it. How some of the younger guys approach practice, and is it sort of like a fall camp for that matter, to where you know you're going to practice for four weeks without playing a game? How, how have the younger guys handled the full prep practice schedule? Well, you know, we've only had two, and um, the first one on Saturday was a really short practice. It was a lot of individual work. Um, just to get our feet back on the ground, start throwing and catching the ball, running and cutting. And then um, the next practice, we did a little bit more work. Um, we got some um, you know, run play action work where we were running the ball and throwing play actions off of it. And then we did a period, which is a team pass period, which you know, it's our passing game against the front four rushing and coverage, trying to get our quarterbacks to stand in the pocket and read things. But for the young guys, they know that they're going to get plenty of work um, these guys that have been, you know, redshirted and on the look squad and given looks, well, they're in the mix now because this is pretty much spring ball has started for them. Um, you know, so it's a, it's definitely a benefit. I think that, um, you know, with a lot of our offensive freshmen playing this year, um, you know, it's going to be a huge benefit for Todd. You know, because he had some kids that are really good that were redshirted working as a look squad against our offense. So we saw more of those guys than Todd did during the season. Oh, I think Kane Pass, um, you know, he was a, and I'm speaking because he was on the scout squad this year. And so he spent more time on our side of the field during practice sessions. You know what I mean? And w with us throwing passes against him and him giving us looks and he has instincts, he can play the ball. Um, I think he's, he'll be a kid that, you know, you're going to hear about a lot. Um, Jonathan Grenard is a really good pass rusher. He gave us a good look all season. Um, and then now he'll get to, you know, get closer to coming out of his red shirt. I think he'll be a name you hear too, also. With them being good pass rushers, your line play obviously is the key factor. How have you seen the offensive line adjust or improve throughout the season? And where do you think they are now? Yeah, I think they're, like I said, these, these days are going to be really good for us because, especially the first week before we, we're game planning now as a coaching staff, but with our kids the first week, we're going to get a lot of individual work. And what happens when you're, you know, a true freshman and you get thrown in the fire, you don't have much time to figure out the basics because we got a game to prepare for. So now you can go back to almost training camp mode and, you know, reteach everything over again, all the techniques, all the drills. And I think that, um, you know, I think they're going to grow. And ultimately, when we get out there, you know, on game day, I think they'll play a lot better than they have. They'll feel a lot more comfortable out on the field. What's your assessment of how they play throughout the season? Yeah, I, th I thought it was up and down, but I think it's like that when you're really young. You know, I have. Um, two really young kids, and they're kind of up and down also, you know. <laughs> so when you have true freshmen all over the field, you know, you're going to have some really good days and some really exciting times, and you're going to have some times where you're going, I have no idea what he's doing out there. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can work them out of that with more reps. Uh, we can work them all out of that. What do you think was their best performance of the year that uh, offensive line specifically? Uh, I don't. I mean, you're only as good as the last game you play. You know, so I just I'm really proud of how they stuck in there, kept banging, kept battling, even when we were down in the last game we played. And, you know, the, the look that they had in the locker room, they were fine. They knew that we had made a couple of mistakes early in the game, gave them some points, that it wasn't like they were dominating us, and that's why we were behind. We had put ourselves in that situation. So we, we knew that our defense would get some turnovers and get some stops. And we just felt like if we can go out with enough energy and enthusiasm and really get going here, then we'd give ourselves a chance to win it in the fourth. When you look back at the line and you look at you've had a true freshman at both tackles for a while, how much does that bode well for the future? Just because those guys did it against a really tough schedule as guys who you normally wouldn't have expected them to be playing a whole lot, right? Uh, well, yeah, the future's bright. I mean, we got a lot of – now, you know, you, they still have to develop. Um, but we did have a lot of really young kids on offense that played a lot of snaps and a lot of big games and big environments. And, um, you know, Jaron, he's the only one that started the whole season every game, you know, in the, as an open side tackle against the elite pass rusher on every team. And him as a true freshman, he was the guy out there to start at every game. So it's, you know, I think he'll really develop. Kenny Thomas was able to play some this year in games. Um, he had an injury that set him back, but we really are excited about Kenny. Um, Lucas, as a redshirt freshman, played a lot of football for us. 
and things tor towards the end of the year started to slow down for Lucas, you know, and um, obviously all those receivers that are out there, you know, they've, they've um, they have, obviously they have talent. The next step will be understanding all the concepts and schemes and how defensive coverages work and where to fit in open lanes instead of just running as fast as you can trying to catch the ball. Coach, I'm not sure how much Van Ham's offense you've watched, but what, what is it about a Kevin Sumlin offense that, that makes them so effective in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, the last time that, um, you know, um, when I was the coach at UAB, we would play games different time than they would. They would be playing that night, you know, Saturday night game, so I got to watch them a lot, and Johnny Manziel was playing for them, so that, that made the offense pretty fun, you know. <laughs> But I'm not sure you have to ask Todd about that. You know, I've spent all my time watching the defense. Good for, the, for, some of the, for some of the offensive guys, you know, Trey Smith, Lamonte, Jalen Smith, and the younger guys who maybe didn't see this year that have a chance to step up this, this month. Yeah, I think there's a lot of them. You, like you said, Imani, um, we, we, we're really excited about him. Um, Trey Smith has come in. He's got himself in shape. Um, you know, he's doing a lot better. Just a really good kid. He's smart. Um, Chandler Jones is an offensive lineman that came in, um, you know, and sit out this year. Um, but we, we're really high on Chandler coming back, doing well for us. And we're really just excited that, you know, we're not going to lose any of these receivers. They're all going to be back next year. Um, you know, the only guys that we're losing, we're losing Epps, who is a captain. We're losing <laughs> Kelby Johnson. Um, we're losing T.C. Klusman. Were you losing Corbin Lamb? And that may, there may be um, Darius Skinner is another senior that we're going to be losing. Um, but besides that, I hope I didn't miss any of them. But besides that, everybody else is back. You know, so we, we should develop the leadership and um, the commitment to excellence that we need because this whole offensive crew has been out there together before. The improvements in your running game as the season came towards the end, how much of that was simply Uh, I think it's a little bit of, you know, all of the timing of it, um, you know, just pressing holes, um, staying on blocks longer, understanding when to come off on the linebackers. Um, you know, for a stretch, it was Kyle putting us in the right play so that we made sure we're running good plays into good defenses. And then it was Lamar, you know, doing what he had to do in the zone read game, getting out on the perimeter, making runs. So I think it's a, um, a combination of all of it, you know, that, that made it happen. Yeah, you know, he, he made a lot of those look like he did the right thing because once he got out there, you know, he was natural. But, you know, I just think it, it, things start to slow down for him, you know, that you, you don't have to make the decision that soon. You have a little bit more time to make the decision. Um, trust yourself um, is one thing I tell them. You know, take what they give you. Don't try to make anything up and guess. Just take what they give you. If the end comes up the field, let our runners run. If that guy squeezes, then you pull it and run. It's that simple. So don't, you know, make it into anything else and don't try to make it hard. Just take what they give you. But when you pull it, go ahead and go run. You know, that's what I told him. How big is a game, can a game like this be in prime time? And, you know, all you have to do for the brand, you know, for recruiting and everything else, just to be in a bowl game and be in one of the games. That yeah, that, that's the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the benefit, you know, of a bowl game, playing against a very good opponent, high-profile opponent, um, you know, in a neutral site, but a game that's close to our home. You know, so our fans will be there, I'm sure. Um, our team will be really fired up. And we really want to go out and represent our program, represent our university the right way so that everybody in the country can see that we are, um, you know, one of those teams in the country that everyone should be thinking and talking about. Um, so it's really important, um, you know, for us to go down and represent ourselves and our school the right way. How difficult is it for Lamar to always do the right thing, I guess, with his mobility and creativity that he has? I mean, is it, is it difficult for him to, to be like a perfect quarterback in a way? Because I know he can, he, you know, he can make things happen with his feet. Is, is that kind of what you were referring to when, when Steve, when you were talking to Steve about, you know, he's not always doing the right thing, but he makes it look like he's doing the right thing? 
Yeah, right. well, I, you know, how they're graded, um, you know, it's the decision that you made is the first grade and the most important thing for a quarterback because you have a decision to make every single snap as a quarterback. You got to make sure we're in the right formation, make sure we're in the right protection, make sure this play is going to work versus this defense. Um, understanding, you know, what the coverage is, making a decision on who to throw to. Um, so the decision making is the most important thing for a quarterback. And, um, you know, that, that's where um, I think experience for any guy um, really does help. You know, I, now are there times when, you know, he's back there and we're yelling at him going, what is he doing? And then he takes off and he runs by us for 40 yards and we go, yeah, good job. That happens a lot. Um, <laughs> You know, but the um, you know he needs to learn that he can save a lot of energy on the field if he take three steps, one hitch, and deliver the ball on time to an open guy down the field. Because at some point, you know, you end up running out of energy when you're running around like that. You know, and he wants to be an efficient quarterback. He does not want to be um, a running quarterback. You know, that's the reason he chose to come and play in our style of offense because he wanted to learn how to put his hands under the center take five-step drops, throw on time, understand coverages, and then let his athletic ability happen natural. Um, so I, I, he just, he's, right now he's just a young kid, you know, but he's going to develop into a really special quarterback. Maybe the opposite of that. Have you got to change your offense some? I mean, just as far as having new play Well, um, we haven't changed our, our um, philosophy of offense. Um, but we have um, done some things to, um, you know, benefit the strengths that we have. And, you know, his strength at a certain point in the season when we were trying to just win games, we had to use his strengths. So it could look like we're running some plays that we haven't emphasized in a while just, just because the kid that we're playing with at this time has different strengths than a lot of kids do. So it's not that we've changed our philosophy at all. We're just really – trying to get our kids, in particular our quarterback, um, in position to use all of his strengths.